Understanding the personality of the Holy Spirit is the key to relating with the Holy Spirit as a person. In other words, to be able to relate with the Holy Spirit as a person, we have to understand the personality of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us as another comforter. The Holy Spirit is the essence of our lives as Christians. In fact, the Holy Spirit is our life. Apostle Paul says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. The Holy Spirit is the life of the Christian. He says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit is a person. John chapter 14 and verse 16. That he may abide with you forever. Holy Spirit is an he. Even the Spirit of truth, womb. Womb is a person. Womb the world cannot receive because it seared him not. Him. It seared him not. Neither knoweth him. Him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Oh, I love this. The Holy Spirit is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The Holy Spirit is in us to produce glory. It is in us. To produce righteousness. He's in us. For he dwelleth with you. And shall be. In you. Jesus. Explains what. Is just about to happen. Just before his. Crucifixion. And he's saying to the disciples. He will pray the father. To give us another, someone, exact replica like him, Jesus. Who was with the disciples, teaching them, guiding them, persuading them, and building them up. The Holy Spirit, we must understand, is a person. Look at those constructions, those phrases. Womb, him, him, he means that he is a pre is present with us as a person. He's a present personality in our lives. Number two, we must understand the Holy Spirit dwells in us. The reason why he was with us is because he has to dwell in us. As at the time Jesus Christ was giving disciples this instruction, the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had to go first. And now he says, he shall be in us. So he is in us now. In verse 17, the Holy Spirit dwells with us and is in us now. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it said him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The reason why the Holy Spirit is in you is to give you direction and guidance about issues in your life. The reason why the Holy Spirit is in us is to give us direction and guidance about issues in our lives so that we will not fail. 
He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you. He will guide you. Is an he, John chapter 16 and verse 13. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Look at that. John 16 and verse 13. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, the Holy Spirit will guide us into what will actually happen or what is intended to happen. It is called truth. The reality. The truth. He will show you the way. He says, the Holy Spirit shall be in us to guide us, to show us the way, to teach us, and to lead us in the way we should go. He says, we shall hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. That is the Holy Spirit speaking. So, he will accomplish this by speaking to us about the future he is in us to guide us to lead us how will he guide us and lead us by speaking to us about the future whatever he receives from the father he reveals it to us that is the life of the christian how will he lead us or guide us? We have said he will speak to us about the future things that are yet to happen. He will unveil things that are yet to happen. He said he will show us things to come. Then he will show us, reveal to us, explain the future true pictures he will show us means he will show us pictures he will show you pictures if you wait on him he will show you hallelujah praise the lord i will share an experience with you just uh, three days ago i was meditating in my room and I just shut everything off. And as I was meditating, just within five minutes of meditation, it gave me a picture immediately. Hallelujah. And he showed me a book, How to Use Power. He gave me the name of the author. I've not seen the book before. I started searching for the book. This is what the Bible says the Holy Spirit will do to us. He will show us things to come. He will guide us into all truth. It means he will reveal to us, he will explain the future to us through pictures. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Therefore, there is need for our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When we fellowship with him, he opens up everything. When we become partners with him, that's the word, he's able to communicate the mind of the Father to us. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 16. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all is very key. The communion of the Holy Spirit means the partnership with the Holy Spirit. 
the communication with the Holy Spirit. It means a participation with the Holy Spirit in fellowship. The contribution of the Holy Spirit in fellowship. This is what communion means. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul knew the mystery of the Holy Spirit. To partner or to fellowship with the Holy Spirit means relating with one another on a friendly basis for mutual benefits. Relating with one another. See how God loves us. He loves us so much that he has to reduce himself to man to die for us, reconcile us back to himself, and shows us the model of the life from above. So, when Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, we will also interact with you the way I have interacted with you. He was telling them, there is one more thing that's required of them. And that is, the Holy Spirit is to be talked to. The Holy Spirit is to be fellowshiped with. He said, as you have been asking me questions about the things you do not know, so also ask the Holy Spirit questions about the things you do not know, about your future, about your worries, about your life. You must learn to communicate with the Holy Spirit. It means you may speak first, then expect an answer or a response. When he speaks to you, he expects you to respond also, either by praying, obeying, doing whatever he says you should do. I'm showing us today learning how to interact with the Holy Spirit, learning how to relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. So, and I just said, we have to learn to communicate with the Holy Spirit. It means we may speak first in prayer. When we speak in prayer, we expect a response from Him. That's the truth. So our expectations are not cut off, they are met. When we expect an answer from him, he says, while we are asking, he will give an answer. Zobra takabalagada. While we are here speaking in prayer, he will give us an answer. So he will speak to us when we expect a response from him, either by praying, obeying, or doing whatever he says we should do. He says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, so he will always speak to us. The Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. As 13 and verse 2. This is life. Life without fellowship with the Holy Spirit is a life of confusion and a life of struggles. The Holy Spirit is our energy. The Holy Spirit is the very life of every Christian. The Holy Spirit is a current and the fire that preserves the Christian. Hallelujah. God says in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And now he lives in us. He lives in us. He says he will put his spirit inside of us. He has made us his people. He has made himself our God. Hallelujah. Every believer, this is why it's compulsory, for every believer 
to receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaking in John chapter 3 says, Except we are born of the Spirit, we can enter. We cannot enter. It's not enough to be baptized into Christ. It's not enough to be born again. It's not enough to confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We must go deeper. Hallelujah. Every believer needs to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So it comes upon you to be inside of you. That power comes and now he lives inside. You know that when Jesus was being baptized, the heavens were open and the Holy Spirit descended up upon him like a dove. And he came upon him like a dove and entered him. You know that when he comes upon us, he enters inside of us. Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit from Jordan. So it comes in to energize us to live the God life. It comes in to fill us all in all. It says, and they were all filled. See, it came upon them and now they are filled. From inside out. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. He comes to fill us. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As chapter 2 and verse 4. He said, for John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. As chapter 1 and verse 5. Hallelujah. Let's remember that God is a spirit and we must relate with him, with our spirits. And God created man in his own image. Genesis 1 and verse 27. And when God created man, God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. After he formed man out of the dust of the ground. Genesis 2 and verse 7. Therefore, man is a spirit and he has a soul and he lives in a body. Man is a spirit, man has a soul, and man lives in a body. And man is the express image of God. Zegla Kabadaba. Will you listen to what I'm about to share with you? Learning to relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. If God made man a spirit that has a soul, then God must also have a soul. If God has a soul, it also means that Jesus and the Holy Spirit share the same characteristics of having a soul. Let's try to understand what a soul is then. What is a soul? The soul is made up of the mind through which we think, the will through which we desire, and the emotions through which we feel. The Holy Spirit helps us to learn to think what God thinks. Talking about the mind. So we understand we have a mind. The Holy Spirit has a mind also. Jesus has a mind. God has a mind. It says the Holy Spirit helps us to think what God thinks. He says, for my thoughts 
and not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, said the Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 11. My thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. See, what God thinks is fixed. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. The thoughts of God are higher. The thoughts of God are equal to his words. The thoughts of God are productive. The thoughts of God causes fruitfulness. The thoughts of God are good, peaceful, not evil, and full of results. This is what God expects us to think. God expects us to think higher thoughts. Expects us to think productively. Expects us to think fruitfully. Expects us to have results whenever we think. Say, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected. So God thinks. God has a mind. And God thinks. Hallelujah. So we must understand how to relate to God. At times, there is something you feel in your thoughts. It relates to you through thoughts. Praise the Lord. We are commanded to think the things that the Holy Spirit thinks only. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. In verse 12 it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation, your own salvation, with fear and trembling. It's teaching us how to think. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The moment we repent and switch our mind, we become obedient to God and His Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to help us to become more like Him in the way we reason, in the way we think. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit has a will. God has a will. Bible talks about the perfect will of God. Praise the Lord. God has a will. A will is a desire. In Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 7, it says, Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, this is a will. This is the will of the Holy Ghost at this time. Verse 7 says, After they were come to Mysia, they assayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. He restrained them. That is his will. We must listen to the will of the Holy Spirit. We are learning how to relate to the Holy Spirit. We must listen to the will of the Holy Spirit. Here he constrained Apostle Paul, forbidding of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. For they were come to 
For after they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit suffered them not. So there is something the Holy Spirit wants you to do at one time. At another time, there is something he does not want you to do. So we must listen to his will always. That is his will. That's his desire. And that's the best for us. That is how he guides us. That is how he leads us. It's the will of the Holy Spirit for Jesus to fast for 40 days after the baptism and announcement of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 1. Verse 12 and 13. It says, And immediately the Spirit driveth him, driveth Jesus into the wilderness. That was the will of God for him. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. The Spirit then Compel Jesus, that's a New Living Translation. The Spirit there compel Jesus to go into the wilderness. That is the will of the Holy Spirit at that point for Jesus Christ. It was also the will of the Holy Ghost that Barnabas and Saul should be separated and sent forth to preach the gospel. That's his will. So he has a will for you. You must listen for the will of the Holy Spirit. For you at particular points in time in your life. In Acts 13 and verse 2, cried to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. That is the will. And thirdly, the Holy Ghost has emotions, the Holy Spirit has feelings. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemp redemption. So the Holy Ghost has feelings. To grieve is to offend. To grieve is to verse. To grieve is to make sad. Hallelujah. What's the remaining of grief? Is to make one sad. Is the loss much more related to the loss of fellowship or communion, but not the loss of relationship. That is why it looks as if at times, even when men are falling from faith, the Holy Spirit does not give up on them. This means that at the point you set out yourself to disobey the commandments of God, you are said to lose the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You are said to lose the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit because he has emotions. What are the true feelings or emotions of the Holy Spirit? He said, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You get that from Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love. These are feelings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when we receive the Holy Spirit into our life, He helps us. He imparts His love upon our hearts. He imparts His joy upon our lives. He imparts His peace upon our lives. Everything He has, He impacts on us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, putting away, see, the Holy Spirit has feelings. What are the things that can cause our relationship or communication with the Holy Spirit to be hindered? He mentions them in Ephesians chapter 4 and from verse 25. He says, Wherefore, putting away lying. Every man should speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. So the Holy Spirit wants us to be truthful to our brothers, to our sisters, to our neighbors, 
to everyone around us. So we should put away lying. This is hinders our communion with the Holy Spirit. Remember, we're looking at how we can relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. Wherefore, putting away lying. Verse 26 of Ephesians chapter 4 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Temptation. Don't open yourself up for temptation. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But let him labor, working with his hands. The things which is good. That's verse 28. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication. So these things hinder the Holy Spirit. They hinder our communion. Our fellowship. Our relationship with him. Hallelujah. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. That it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Look at that. That is verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31. These things hinders our relationship with the Holy Spirit. As a person, let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all clamor, all evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Hallelujah. See, and he's recommending to us in verse 32, and be ye kind, be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Praise the Lord. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So, this is how we can relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. As a person, Christ said, I'm going, I'm going to send you another comforter. Who will be with you the way I have been with you? He will be with you. He will be inside of you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides us, directs us, leads us into the path where God has prepared for us. He causes us to be helped all the time. When we call on Him, He hears us. Praise Master Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit for us. Please go back to the teachings and listen to the teachings. Be blessed in Jesus' precious name. Amen.